Okay, now, this video uh, starts to get into some pretty interesting stuff. This video is going to demonstrate the uh, very simple idea of accessing spreadsheet cells from VBA. So let's go take a look at some Visual Basic code that does this. So right off the top here, I'm going to declare a memory location, um, a numeric memory location. And the first line of code is going to actually ask the user for a number, and we'll just store it then into that memory location. So again, as uh, if you've watched the uh, little video about computer memory, this is the right-hand side. The right-hand side, of course, generates a value. And this is the left-hand side, which is a memory location, and that value is then stored into that left-hand side. Now, the key idea here that you have to understand is that the keyword cells in VBA for Excel represents a range object. It represents a range object of a single cell, just one cell. Unfortunately, that's got the word S in there, and that totally screws people up. But the basic idea is that if you say cells, row, comma, column, you're referring to a single cell range. Very simple idea, row, comma, column. Both of those are numbers. All you got to do is memorize that. For some people, that's going to be a little tricky. I've stumbled over this for a long time before it just made common sense. So here's a nice simple example of this. We're going to take that memory location number. We're going to retrieve the value stored there. And then we're going to store that into this right-hand side. Now, in this particular case, you'll notice on the right-hand side, we don't actually have a declared variable on the right-hand side. We actually have a location on the current default worksheet. So the current default worksheet is going to be sheet 1 in our workbook because we don't specify otherwise. Sheet 1 is the one that we are working on. So the current default worksheet sheet 1, and we're going to go to cells 6, 1. The 6 represents, again, the row, and the 1 represents the column. So we should see in cell 6, 1 the number the user has entered. And another thing you'll then notice that's a little different in this program is that here's this pause keyword. Now, pause is not really built into Visual Basic, but if you'll notice down below, I've created a brand new subroutine called pause. And all that subroutine has in it is a message box that just says press the enter key to continue. So it pops the message box up on the screen and you're left staring at your worksheet while that message box is on the screen. So this allows us to kind of look and see what happened to the worksheet. Otherwise the program would just go zoot and just run right through all of our statements and we couldn't actually sort of step by step through it. Of course to call my new subroutine pause all I needed to do is give the name of the subroutine. Pause. And it calls this subroutine, which executes this statement. So then the next statement down does something very similar, but with a little twist. What we're doing here now is on the right-hand side, now remember the right-hand side is always a value. So on the right-hand side, we retrieve the number that's stored in cell 6, 1, row 1, I mean row 6, I'm sorry, see, I just made that mistake, row 6, column 1. We retrieve that value, whatever it is, and we add 1 to it. So on the right-hand side, then, we have a value. And we take that value, and of course, we stick it into location 6, 2, row 6, column 2. We do a pause. Then we do something very similar here for location 6, 3. We grab the value out of 6, 2, add 1 to it, and store it back into 6, 3. And pause, so we can stare at it. And then finally, we just do something slightly different, but not much. In this case, we're going to go down a row. So we're going to say, get the value in cell 6, 3, add 1 to that one, and then store it into row 7, column 1. Very simple idea. So let's run this program and actually watch and see if it does what we think it's going to do. So I'll hit the Go button. And I'll enter a number. How about if I enter the number 99? And I'll hit Enter. And as soon as I hit Enter, it ought to put the number into row 6, column 1, and then pause again. And there's the 99 in row 6, column 1. And my little prompt comes up, says press enter to continue. Of course, we'll do that. And it takes that 99, adds 1 to it, and stores it in the next column over, 6, 2. And it grabs the value out of 6, 2, adds 1 to it, and stores the value in 6, 3. 
Now this is a little confusing to people because notice when I'm referring to this cell right here, that's cell row 6, column 3, rather than column C. So you can now start thinking about the columns as being numbered as well as the rows. That's exactly the way Excel actually thinks about the columns. It doesn't actually think about the columns as A, B, C, D, and so on. It simply displays letters for users, and that's a kind of a historical thing because my Lotus 1, 2, 3 used letters. The original Excel multiplan did not, but Excel wanted to, the original Microsoft multiplan, which turned into Excel. But Microsoft wanted to compete against Lotus 1, 2, 3 and felt they had to make the user interface similar with the columns A, B, C, D, and so on. But underneath the hood, Excel always refers to rows and columns by number. So my suggestion to you is to start thinking the same thing. It's kind of difficult, though, once you get much past D or E, because I doubt if most of you can tell me what letter of the alphabet M is. So when you're trying to refer to the M column, what number is that? Well, I'll show you later how you can actually change the user interface in Excel to show you column numbers rather than column letters. Well, let's press continue again. And if we're trying to predict what this program is going to do, well, the very last one, of course, was to take the value that's in row 6, column 3, add 1 to it, and place the result into row 7, column 1. So we ought to get what in that cell right there? We ought to get a 102, I'm thinking. So let's press OK. And indeed, there's our 102 in that cell. So this is a very simple concept, but at the same time, it's all new. And for people that have never seen this before, it's going to require practice. So let's go back to that code. So you can actually type this code in and, and practice these statements yourself and play around with the notion of cells, 6, 2, or whatever. Place things onto, into lots of different cells on the sheet and just practice using row and column numbers. You also can put a string into a cell if you wish. You'd simply say something like cells 1, 1 equals, and then you'd give the string. Let me just give you an example of that one. Um, I'll just do it down here at the bottom. You'd say cells 1, 1, which of course would be the very first cell in your spreadsheet, is set equal to, and then you type your string. This is a string. Now, if you had a string variable, of course, you could use a string variable instead of this string literal. A string literal is a constant value. Of course, that will never change every time I run this program. I'd get the same thing. But this would do pretty much what you would expect. So now you have a technique that you can use to actually store either numbers or strings into a spreadsheet cell. Now, this is a pretty powerful concept, as you can imagine. Um, we'll come back to these, this concept later and see how we can actually maybe do some formatting once we refer to a cell. But right now, just with this, you can do a lot of interesting programming. Thank you.